I love you with my heart, with my soul, with every fiber of my entire being. How are you feeling right now, beautiful soul? So today I wanna to discuss the psychiatric wards that we all live in. We as human beings actually live in an asylum. I've been really contemplating this recently. And when you think about it, every single one of us pretty much is a little bit mental. What goes on inside of our heads is crazy. We create so many problems. We are actually all a bit mental. Let me run this little scenario past you. You're sitting there and everything's great. Everything's harmonious. You and your partner are having a great relationship. But, but you have a deep-rooted issue, which could be rejection, which could be abandonment. So what happens is your head because it's so used to experiencing certain chemicals and emotions or chemicals that are derived from certain emotional reactions and responses, it becomes addicted to them. And so what happens when you're in that state of Zen and space of equilibrium, when you're being calm and relaxed, everything's great in your relationship, your mind starts to create a scenario inside of your head which could be your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your husband or your wife has met somebody else and you're told this news. They phone you or you go home and they break this news to you. This is all playing out inside of your head and what happens is you start to feel those feelings of being rejected or abandoned. And so your brain gets fed and so your brain and your mind creates these scenarios inside of your own consciousness to trigger the reaction which isn't real in your external reality but your mind doesn't know the difference between what is real and what isn't. So your body feels the emotions and the chemicals are released. Now that is quite crazy when you think about it. We create stuff to feed an addiction that we don't even want but our body becomes addicted to it. When something traumatic happens in your life or something stressful, certain chemicals are released. The body responds in a certain way. And if we have a stressful event occur and we don't deal with it and put it to rest, there's what's known as a refractory period. And that is the length of time that this plays out. So, if something stressful happens today and in five days you're still pondering it, contemplating it, thinking about it, that refractory period has lasted for five days. Your body is feeling those emotions, those chemicals are being released for five days. Now this can go on for weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years. The longer it goes on for, the, the more it's reinforced into your consciousness, it becomes a habit, it becomes a pattern, and it's difficult to break. So even if you've faced rejection from birth, or maybe from a parallel reality past life, which is all playing out quantumly, in the now space, it's why it affects you, you're being triggered left, right, and center. What we've got to do as humans is break those refractory periods or shorten them to nothing by raising our levels of consciousness, raising our levels of awareness, realizing it's happening and making a different choice. Come back to our heart, expand our heart frequency, get the mind and the brain, sorry, the mind and the heart in, in, in equilibrium, in coherence, so that that heart chakra is open and that frequency of unconditional love is pouring out into the space. It's why I say we're mental. It's why I say we're crazy and we're living in an asylum because we are. When we speak to other people in conversation, quite often when we're speaking to them, we're thinking about other things. Guaranteed pretty much of the time, 90% of the time when you're listening to someone, 
you're not actually listening. You're thinking about something else. There's all of this chatter inside of our heads. We are completely fucking bonkers. We really are going mental. We're living in one great big asylum. I'm not surprised we're all walking around in straitjackets because we should be. You know the people that are really sane are the people that are in the asylums, the people that are in the straitjackets. At least they're trying to sort themselves out. There's awareness being raised inside of their consciousness. I know some of them might be drugged up and they might not be conscious enough to deal with it right now because they're locked into the system, but at least they're in there and they've got a chance. Most of the human race are walking around free, but the asylum is inside of their head, so they're not really free. They're completely and utterly mental having all of these conversations about things that don't even exist, about the future, dragging things up from the past. It's crazy. Absolutely flipping bonkers, man. It is mad. So what are we going to do about this? What are you going to do about this? What am I going to do about this? What are we as a species going to do about this to change things? Well, first of all, it takes discipline. You've got to be disciplined in your approach. Now, you can only have discipline after you've gained awareness. The simple fact that you're watching this video shows me, and it shows you, that the awareness is rising inside of you to realize that we've all gone a little bit mental and we need to reel ourselves back in and come back to our huts. So you've got that awareness, now you need to exercise the discipline. And the discipline comes every moment of every single day. You've got to take a disciplined approach to observe your environment and not to get entangled within your environment on a mental level. It's okay to get entangled on an energetic level because we are energy, we are frequency, we're light, we're information, streaming light frequencies and light codes through our bodies. We are just a pattern of frequency and code. So you're always going to be linked by information to everything in your environment. But mentally and emotionally, you've got to disengage and that is going to free you up. So how do you do that? Well, you've got to make life a constant meditation. I'm not talking about getting up and meditating for the first 30 minutes of every single day. I'm talking about making life a constant meditation. That doesn't mean sitting under a tree with your eyes closed, dressed in white rags on a mountaintop. What it means is you observing your external environment. Once you decide to observe your external environment with no judgment, with no labels, you automatically take away the reaction, the response, and that mental and emotional connection. This is something you possess inside of yourself. You have the power of choice to choose when bombs are going off, when families are arguing, when family members are saying things to press your buttons. You don't have to react. You can smile, you can stay in your heart. When you're stuck in a traffic jam, you can smile and enjoy the present moment, enjoy the experience. If you're late for your meeting, that's okay. It's just the way that it is. You can't change the traffic. So just accept where you are right now and be at peace with yourself. Be at peace with your external environment. That is meditation. Now you can go beyond this. And to go beyond this, you might want to do it in silence with your eyes closed. So you can go into a deep meditative state where you slow your brain waves down, where you slow your heart rate down. Clear and empty the canvas of your mind and then start to draw and paint and create the world around you exactly how you want it to be. And then by raising your vibration and your frequency, by accepting everything and being at peace and being in your heart always, you're naturally going to align with the reality you're creating on the inside because the outside is going to align with that. 
You're going to step into it. It's just going to evolve around you. It's going to manifest. We can step outside of the asylum, outside of the mentalness, into peace, love, harmony, compassion, joy, gratitude, inspiration, right now. You don't have to wait. Just decide. Make that choice. Meditation. Observation. Detachment. You are the power, beautiful soul, and I love you unconditionally with every fiber of me. Wherever you are on this planet, love fiercely, hug tightly, and never be the first to let go. I love you with my heart, with my soul, with every fiber of my entire being. We really are a family, we really are a tribe. Let's work together. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and share. If you're watching it on Facebook, like it and share it. Share these positive messages with your sisters and your brothers, with your human family. I love you unconditionally and I'll see you again real soon, beautiful soul. One love, one heart, one human family. Check out starmagichealing.com. Peace out, beautiful soul.